So unfortunately, there aren't enough resources in our homeless response system so that everyone can get their needs met. Um, and really what that means for specifically communities of color is that there's disproportionately lack of services and resources um, to really address the unique needs that those communities are facing. Homelessness is an experience that is extremely visceral. Um, folks who are sheltered and unsheltered alike know that there's a problem in our society when people are unsafe and unhoused. With our work in particular, we like to support organizations that really take what we call a culturally responsive approach in supporting these young people. We really want to be responsive to community providers that are in their community so that they can really be responsive to the needs of the youth that they're working with. It's actually unique that Building Changes gets to partner and fund tribal communities. One great example of work that we're doing now is with Cowlitz Indian Tribe working with youth um, exiting public systems of care. Imagine getting into trouble as a youth and being sent to juvenile detention center, completing your sentence, and then transitioning out and not having anybody there to come alongside you to help you do that. And some of the challenges that these kids are facing um, when transitioning from these places are lack of resources, lack of family resources, lack of financial resources, lack of tribal resources in their communities. Terrifying to think of coming out of a place like that and not having a support system. Um, critical transitions coaching is really inspiring because it's a new approach, but it just makes a lot of sense. We've seen, especially for youth who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color, when they exit these public institutions of care, foster care, juvenile rehabilitation, and behavioral health facilities, they're disproportionately likely to experience homelessness. So I met Jason um, about nine months ago, and he's an 18-year-old Native man. Um, out of a tribe in Minnesota who has lived in Washington and Oregon for his whole life. And he was getting ready to transition over to Green Hill School for his last three months of his sentence. So while there, I worked directly with his team at Green Hill and with Jason to create a transition plan for him to make sure that he had everything in order uh, by the time of his release. That included building rapport with him and his team, creating an actual physical transition plan together, which included where are we gonna stay who are you going to stay with? Um, what are you thinking for employment? What are you thinking for school? What's your plan socially for your group of friends? Um, and we kind of laid all that on the table. So he had a comfort and a, a good feeling about his release. And then another thing we're trying to do now is to reconnect him with his tribe in Minnesota. So we created a transition plan for him to stay with his grandma. And it's been really good. He's done incredibly well. He has kept a job for six months full time. He stayed out of trouble completely, has good social relationships with his friends and his peers. Jason himself has said that he feels like he has made an influence in his own community. The fact that they've seen him make a mistake, go away for a while, come back to the same community and have changed thoughts and different patterns, I think is huge for his community. A lot of Jason's success was his own. I just came alongside him, alongside his team there to help him. And a lot of times that's all they need is somebody to just have confidence in them and help them connect those small dots in the real world here. You know, you come out of one of these facilities like Green Hill, you're freshly 18. You don't really have anywhere to go or know what to do or what your next step is. That's where we just come alongside them and show them their own vision and then help them reach it. One thing we're really proud of at Building Change is to, is to allow flexible funding for our grantee partners. We know that a top-down approach doesn't work because it creates real prescriptive barriers for our partners working community to do their work. So what Building Changes is doing different um, from other partnerships and organizations is their flexibility of funding. Being able to purchase a Native youth a mattress and a box spring is life-changing. Being able to get somebody a driver's license that would never have been able to. That's life-changing. Being able to repair someone's window because it's broken and they're cold at night, that's life-changing. These are things that Building Changes does that most organizations aren't, aren't able to. And that's how we're gonna change these young lives because the fact of the matter is they don't have money. It's not a lot of money for them. 
One important thing that we focus on is to make sure that Adam has other folks doing similar work that he can problem solve and build relationship with. Being able to bounce ideas off of the peer network uh, in the state and being collaborative about it has been key. What makes us really unique in Building and Changes is that we get to partner with organizations working in the community to see how these strategies are working. Innovate and iterate is what we talk about, um, to see how these strategies stick so that we can build solutions that are usable across the state. This is important work and there's also still a lot more we can do. So thank you for any support you can give today.